Mangi bingelele eka meneli shelengo se tu chesu krestu. Di bingelele no maigu pila po nikona batandegayo. E makaya, e ngeaza baning on this wonderful Sunday. Baye inkonzwe ni bayo tume sana mshanje in the meeting in the churches. E nati as we are presenting the word of God to you, we want to welcome and greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank the Lord once again. We will never stop thanking God for allowing us to come together and preach the word of God and testify about his power. Even today on this lovely Sunday morning, we are here to glorify the name of the Lord. We are here to give him the praise and we are here to thank God and worship him from the bottom of our hearts. Hallelujah. As you see today, we are having our Holy Communion Sunday. I guess by now you know that every first Sunday of the month, we dedicate this day to eat the Holy Communion and remember what the Lord has done. I'm saying this now so that if you haven't prepared your Holy Communion, you can quickly rush to your kitchen. You can grab water, you can grab juice, whatever good liquid that you have. You can grab, grab a bread or a biscuit or whatever that you have so that we can participate together when the time of participating in the Holy Communion comes. Hallelujah. Let us just pray and thank God for being with us and thank God for taking care of us particularly and pray also for many of our brothers and sisters who've decided to open the churches today and fellowship in the house of the Lord. We thank God for allowing that. We thank God for giving people of God the power and the opportunity and the means to be able to be ready so that they can fellowship in the house of the Lord as they are congregating. And I just want us to pray for the church of God and thanking God for that. Join me in this prayer. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come before your throne on this lovely Sunday morning, O Lord. Father, we praise your holy name. We praise your living name. We thank you for everything that you are doing for us as your children. Father, once again, Sipagamisi kamalakel na mantla jenge nkosu no msindisi. Situ ingwele upageme akeko fana nawe. Sikbonilu stwala, sikbonilu hamba nati. Wahambe nati kwa ze kwa langulu nkulwe tu wa sivigela. Nano maini nte sasele impilwe nze tu wa strina wa slondoloza. Sia sonde lage si ibanja lako. Naglonsugo lushika ngaga. Sia kulega nkulu nkulwe tu sibiza ika malakel na manja. Uguba uzbona gali sektina, uzbona gali se impilwe nza bantwa na bako. As they are watching this sermon, Father God, from the comfort of their homes or wherever where they are situated right now, I release the anointing of God upon myself. I release the anointing of God upon each and everyone who is viewing to this sermon in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we want to thank you for the opportunity you have given us as the church in South Africa that our doors can be reopened and many churches, particularly during this time of COVID-19, many churches and many congregations are meeting in physical. They are in their churches coming together to worship you. We thank you for granting us that opportunity as the church of God. And I pray for your cover. I pray for the protection. I pray that you be with your people. No my Let the spirit of the Lord fall on them, all of them, Father God. And Father, we thank you for this and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. And we are praying also, O oh Lord, for us who are not yet opened, that as we are streaming our services currently, you still bless the church of God in its totality. Irrespective of where we are based, I pray for your glory and your anointing from every church of God that is coming and presenting the word of God in its true word and power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs> if you've just joined us, let me welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Today, I want to talk about the power of the blood. Amandla asekazeni. But I don't want to talk about just any blood. Because if we just say the power of the blood, other people, we may think that we are talking about the power of the blood of chicken, the power of the blood of cows, the power of the blood of the natural lambs. But as Kulumi, Ngamandla Ekazi, we in Kuku, we in Komo name Bozi. Goras Kulumanga Mandla Wekazi, Liga Chess. And it's a message. Enga Sashunya Loglin Tugu. This is the message that many people are now running away from preaching about the power of the blood. Many people think good when you preach about the strength and the power of the blood of Jesus, you are old fashioned. The pastors do not want to touch anything about the power of the blood. We find a lot of liberal theologians who don't want to say anything about the power of the blood of Jesus. But Namlanje, I want us to come and not reject the idea of Christ's blood who has paid for our sins. Ikazi liga Jesu eli washe eli shanze izono zetu singa bantu ana bagan kulunkulu aike ni into bazaluane enzo guti zono zetu zishanzwe zishanzwe e impulenze tu it is not the sermons that we are preaching it is not all the good that we are doing we can do greater good on earth we can move around and help many people on earth. We can contribute and buy groceries and assist abandabaning emslabini. But ayiko inte yagu sindisa uguze slungele ungena ezulwini oga nye sbizwe ngabantu anabaga nkulunkulu ngapanje gwe kazil gachesu. Now the blood of Jesus is the blood of the Lamb of God. Is the blood that saves is the blood that sanitizes, is the blood that sanctifies, is the blood that secures those of or to whom they apply it. If we apply the blood of Jesus in our daily lives, if we apply the blood of Jesus in everything that we do, we know that we are secured. We know ugutisifigelegile. We know ugutunkulunkulu unati. Uzo stena kandifuti uzo slondoloza e impilwenze tu sonke. Ayiko hoge enyi nito na mtanje mfunu kulumangayo nga pande kwe kazi liga chesu. Can we open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews? We will read verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 9, we'll read verse 12. Hebrews chapter 9 and let us read verse 12. And I want to just highlight that the blood of Jesus Christ can save your life. The blood of Jesus Christ saves. The verse reads thus, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Amen. That gives us redemption. I've preached this sermon many times in my life. And I don't want to stop preaching the sermon about the blood of Jesus. I don't want us to forget. It is the blood of Jesus and none, nothing else. It is the blood of Jesus, but not the blood of the goats. It is the blood of Jesus, but not the blood of the calves. It is the blood of Jesus that brings what we call eternal redemption. If we apply the blood of Jesus in our lives, we will get eternal redemption. And for us to be able to do that, we need to take the blood of Jesus, which is still fresh even today. 
which we can apply it in every situation in our lives, which we can use even today. The blood of Jesus. Let me tell you, I know other people right now are confused. Go to Kulmangani. I am talking with Ezingi Zinto in our lives. We don't need to see them with our natural eyes, but we need to see them with our spiritual eyes. We need to apply our spiritual minds. I'm not sure if you are hearing me. And when I talk about applying the blood of Jesus, I may not talk physically about touching the blood, like you will go and slaughter chicken and goats and cows so that you can wash yourself with the blood of those animals. No, 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 no. When I say we must apply the blood of Jesus, I am talking in the spiritual realm. I'm talking with the eyes of the spirit that wherever we go, you know, when I walk around in the streets, when I drive in my life, I smear the blood of Jesus on the roads, in my car, on myself, in my children's lives, in all my belongings. I apply the blood of Jesus in the spiritual because I know when I apply the blood of Jesus in the spiritual, it says here, it secures those to whom they apply. The blood of Jesus, when I apply it in the spiritual, it sanitizes the environment, the area where I am. When I apply the blood of Jesus in the spiritual, it sanctifies everything. It purifies everything. It makes sure so when I come to people and minister the word of God, I don't talk my theological thinking. I don't talk my mind, but I talk the blood of Jesus. I first apply the blood of Jesus in whatever situation. May not necessarily hear my words, but can hear the word of the Lord. And the word of God in the book of Hebrews that we've just read on chapter 9, it says when you apply the blood of Jesus, Jesus, you will obtain eternal redemption. Uksindi so okwapagate. Yes, uksindi so okwapagate. Uksindi so ekneke upinde futi gube gubole. Ekneke futi gubisele move. Uyo shalanjalo ungumtuwa naka mkulunkulu. When you apply this blood of Jesus. I want us to read the book of 1 Peter. Chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. If Undea Ganjina. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. I remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was during the Passover time when I was preaching about a sermon about the blood of Jesus. And I read this scripture that says we are not redeemed with corruptible things. We are not redeemed to Bazalwani with our churches our churches at some point they will they will age they will collapse our churches at some point they will be empty our churches might not be there at some point and when i talk about churches i'm talking about the walls and the buildings we are not redeemed by our pastors we are not redeemed by any man we are not even redeemed by our government we are not redeemed by the things that we see on earth which are corruptible. When we talk about corruptible things, we talk about anything that you see with your natural eye. Anything that you see with your natural eye is not eternal because there will come a time But the word of God says here, we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. We are not redeemed by silver and gold. We should not be abandoned by Uncle who are after money. We should not be abandoned by Uncle who are after material things, like those are the things that we are saved for. 
We are not saved for silver and gold. We are not saved to be running after material things. But we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Amen. We are not redeemed by things that have aimless conduct. That's what the scripture says. We are not redeemed by the traditions of anybody else. We are not redeemed by the traditions of people, no matter who they may be. We are not redeemed by those things. But we are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord, of Christ, as the lamb without blemish, as the lamb without spot. We know when Christ was crucified on the cross, when he went to the cross, Bazalwani, he sinned no one. He killed nobody. He blasphemed no one. He did not commit any adultery. He did not do anything according even to the laws of the Jews or the Romans at that time that would have made him to be crucified. But without blemish, without any spot, he was able to exchange our sins to him and give us his glory that I was talking about this week. He was able to say, give me all the sins of the world that I may carry them upon my shoulder and walk with the cross. And as I walk with the cross, being beaten by everybody, being spitted by everybody, being blasphemed by everybody. He was carrying the weight of this world to the cross. And he was so much in pain, but he persevered and never gave up up until that last last sin that last person who was committing any sin could even throw his sin to him and he said it is finished and when he said it is finished he was not talking about anything else but he was talking about the power of the blood of Jesus that can bring us the eternal redemption from whatever sinful nature that we find ourselves and he said it is finished. When he said it is finished, the Bible says he then took out his last breath because it was over with sin in our lives. That meant eternal redemption in our lives. Then we obtained that power. We obtained that strength from Christ Jesus. Amen. Now the love of Christ is amazing, but the guy influences it. The love of Christ carries us. The love of Christ is the one because agas tenga ngaje gezinte ebolayo. Now u Christu u standa ngaso songi skat wonka malanga u Jesus u ya sinagegele u ya sifigele. Ayi keni mission age komunyu muntu that he focuses on. Unkulunkulu e chagana ndaba nezinte iningi except us. Hence, he has given us the authority of above everything. Now, I want you to hear me well. God's concern, it is nothing else. It is not even nature. It is not animals. It is nothing else. But God's concern is us, the human, the men and women that he created. Unkulunkulu agana ndaba nemvelo ene mfunu ngizo kahle ngoba ngizoyichaza le nte ngishoyi agana ndaba ngisho nano mhlaba agana ndaba ngisho na anything except us because the word of god says in the book of genesis he has entrusted us and gave us the dominion over everything he gave us the dominion over the environment he gave us the dominion over the animals he gave us the dominions over everything that you can see on earth that is why it is then our responsibility as humans to ensure that we do not destroy the environment it is therefore our responsibility as human beings to ensure that we don't contribute into global warming we don't contribute in destroying the animals and the plants and all the ecosystem we take care of that because we've been given dominion that is why us as human beings we are able to go into the space and use all the brains and the minds we have to go to the space we are able to even do 
amazing things that nobody has probably ever thought we can do modifying seeds you know there's what we call genetic modification we are able to do all this thing we are able to manipulate things that we see because we've been given that dominion in our lives I don't care whether we are called no ma au call. Unkulu unkulu snigile it dominion. It doesn't matter. Ugutu mtu anaka unkulu unkulu. No ma au sum mtu anaka unkulu unkulu. You have dominion. You have strength. You have brains. Your brain cells has nothing to do with your faith. But unkulu unkulu. Into akatelele nga ayok tina. Nga pezu kwa zo zonke zinto. Ngo buwa zonke zinto. Unike tina manja. Ugutu sibe nga pegu wazo. Yitina. Now if focus gatiko. Every time, 24-7, he focuses on us. Singa bantuana, baga mkulunkulu. He ensures guti, tina si right. Ujesu, impilo ya kewa nkeliti paipe lami, asa hele zuluini, ungu meli wetu. I don't know how the devil gets access to the heavens or meet with the heavens. But when the devil goes there to accuse us about the things that we have done, about some of the sins that we have committed, he comes and stand up as Jesus Christ. And in his body, the Bible says he will stand as an advocate on our behalf and say no man abe satane unga kamba mapa manga no munga letter ip report about these people one thing that i know i have given them eternal redemption yes that person might have fallen but that person has the ability and the power to rise up again and move on with the things of the lord amen i want us to quickly read in the book of ephesians Chapter 1, verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It reads thus. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus not only saves the repentant, but also condemns the defiant. Hmm. The blood of Jesus, it also, even says it doesn't also make us with the sin is so pale. But even when we try to, def to, to default, to fall off the radar, or to fall off, is it only the blood of Jesus that can still work in our lives to rejuvenate us, to resurrect us, to give us that power. Namanya mazwi, ayiko into that can give us eternal condemnation with our Christ Jesus. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Except when you stop accepting Christ in your life until you go to your death. And when you die, that's the end. But as long as you are breathing, as long as you are walking around, there is nothing, nothing on earth that will bring eternal condemnation in your life. You may have committed whatever sins. The blood of Jesus is able to wash you. You may have done things that uh, are so embarrassing, things that men don't want even to hear when you come. But the blood of Jesus is so amazing that it washes everything. It washes whiter than the snow. And that's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is not here to condemn us. The blood of Jesus is here that we may live under his riches. We may live under his grace. Amen. Because the grace of the Lord is sufficient for all of us. The grace of the Lord can carry us. The grace of the Lord has an ability to walk with us. It's the grace of the Lord that is able to be with us and, and, and give us the second chance, the third chance, the thousand chance, the million chance. That is why Abanyabantu, because they know about these riches of his grace, they are taking advantage of this grace. Yes, you may be winning and take advantage of this grace, but one day, be careful. You are playing on a very thin line if you play like that. 
Amen. I want to say to you, the blood of Christ Jesus, it sanitizes. This is the perfect time to talk about sanitizing because we now all understand what is to sanitize. Now the blood of Jesus Christ sanitizes. And I want you to read with me Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews and read verse 22. Ifunde and according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of the blood, there is no rem remission. Amen. The blood of Jesus sanitizes. When you apply, when you apply the blood of Jesus, I know, I know. During this time, when they were saying coronavirus is is a killer, coronavirus will destroy. And I know there are men and women of God who stood up and said, "We apply the blood of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus everywhere. We apply the blood of Jesus in our buildings, in our lives, in everything." And I buy a bantu bati. Hey, 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 mfundis. No more apply kazilga Jesus, but make sure that you take care. We understand that because in the spiritual, in the physical. We need to make sure that we do things of the physical. But in the spiritual as well, we want to apply the blood of Jesus. We want to sanitize our buildings with the blood of Jesus. So that even when we do the physical things of applying the mask and the sprays and sanitizing everywhere, which we should do it, and sanitize our buildings, which we should do it. But we must also understand that the power of doing all these earthly sanitizing comes from applying the blood of Jesus in the spiritual. Because once the blood of Jesus is applied in the spiritual, once we sanitize everything in the spiritual, once we understand that the battle that we have is not about flesh and blood, but it's about the principalities, it's about the spiritualities, it's about the evilness, especially with this demon, with this virus that we cannot see, that we don't know where it is, that we cannot identify, that there are no microscopes that we can put on our eyes every day so that we can visualize it. We don't know how it looks like. We don't know where it actually rests. We are hearing it touches surfaces. It touches everywhere. And indeed, we must use the earthly sanitizing to sanitize and purify and clean everything. I'm not against that. I am for that. I am pro that. But we as the children of God, after we've done the applications of all the disinfectants of this world that we can use, let us not forget to take the blood of Jesus that has the redemption power, that has the power to save, that has the power to assist us, and let's apply it in the spiritual. You must go in your rooms and apply the blood of Jesus. You know, you need some time to walk in the yard, all over your yard, and apply the blood of Jesus. You need to go in your bedrooms, in all the living rooms, in all places in your home and apply the blood of Jesus. You need to be like a crazy person that a non-believer may not understand what you are doing. And just apply the blood of Jesus. Everything that you have, your cars, your belongings, apply the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus has power to sanitize. Anything, anything. I'm gonna make the money as a shukme zana naawe. Umubegi kazilga chase pambi. Yeah, no demons. I'm gonna luto as a shukme zana nempilo yako. When you apply the blood of Jesus in your life and on everything that you have, Amen. First John, hmm. Chapter one, verse seven. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Oh, hallelujah. This blood of Jesus is a sanitizer. 
When we walk in the light, na hizo lente shoy. When we walk in the light because he is in the light. Ukristo wetu akahlanganyeli nobumnyama uhlala sekukhanyeni nathi impilo zethu when we walk in the light when we come to Christ when we understand this salvation this word John here says we have the fellowship with one another hence we are going back to churches we want to have that fellowship despite whatever restrictions that we may have yes we understand yes we will comply yes we will ensure that we comply we are happy that we've been given the opportunity to reopen churches we are happy that the clergy the pastors have been declared as the frontline essential services workers so that we can go and have fellowship with one another and the word of god says when we have fellowship with one another then we understand the power that is in the blood of jesus the blood of jesus that cleans every sin every sin every it cleans. It is a sanitizer. When you are troubled, when you are worried, when you received bad news, when you feel depressed, sometimes you feel like you are powerless, you've lost everything. You mustn't worry too much. You must just ask the blood of Jesus to come to you. It will cleanse you. It will make sure is cut. Amen. I want to close and say the blood of Jesus sanctifies. The blood of Jesus sanctifies. Hebrews chapter 13 will read verse 12. Ifundeya kanje. Therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate. Amen. Ikazi lika Jesu sanctify. Ikazi lika Jesu lenza show ukuthi we become sanctified in everything. A sanctified person umuntu onganalutho ezomhlukumeza. When you are sanctified, kusho ukuthi konke onakho impilo yakho yonke iyenzwe yabancwele uncwelisiwe. You are sanctified. When something is sanctified, that means it is purified in the highest, in the highest manner that it can. And that's us, but the guy. When we apply the blood of Jesus, when we take the Holy Communion and remember what the Lord has done, and remember the blood of Jesus, when we take this blood of Jesus and apply it everywhere in our house, in the spiritual, in the spiritual, we must understand clearly that we are sanctified. And let me tell you, people know that the blood works. They know, they know. Actually, they know. That is why you find many people, because they might not be sure which blood works, they go to the blood of goats, they go to the blood of chickens, they go to the blood of calves, they go to any type of blood, and they use that blood. Unfortunately, the word of God does say that alike lingikazi that will cleanse that will purify that will save that will sanitize except the blood of Jesus now this is the power that we have and we need to apply it in the spiritual not not necessarily going around and taking blood of things and then thinking it's the blood of Jesus no 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 but we do it in the spiritual and we apply and, and I hope you can hear me I hope people of God you can hear me that wherever we go we take that blood of Jesus and we sanctify the places we sanctify the places with the blood of Jesus and we must apply it influence it I'm just thinking of this last verse Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 it says but now in Christ Jesus you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus many of us we've been far away we did not even know Christ some of us maybe we were not even born in Christian families we were born in places where all types of rituals were done. We were born under many altars. And many of us had to destroy those altars. 
Some of us still need to destroy some of the altars that were placed even way before our time. That are even people were, 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 were going to those altars that we need to make sure that we are destroying them and removing those altars because those altars are not the altar of God, are not the right altar. But the word of God says, the blood of Jesus has brought us far. You are the first one to have accepted Christ and believe in this Christ. Maybe after this sermon today, you will, you will be the first one who would have accepted Christ or who will accept Christ and bring a new thing in the family. The blood of Jesus. Island as he could say is into the two and never that sends a loot as a sense of the loot and bring us to Christ and bring us to God. Nothing but the blood. I know many liberal theologians will dispute the issue of the blood, but I'm telling you, they will think this is paganism. This is not paganism. This is nothing, but it is God power. This blood of Jesus has power, and we need to know in our lives, does it matter how sophisticated we can be in our faith, in our sermons, in our preaching, in our loving Christ? But I want to say to you today, I can you into as a Caesar, it sanctifies. And I want you, Namsanje, to join me as we are about to take the Holy Communion. I want to invite you to come and join me. Because right now we're going to perform a symbolic way of remembering what the Lord has said when he had his last supper and abafundi bake when he was about to be crucified the bible in the in the gospel says he went to the upper room and wahlala and abafundi bake and as they were talking and, and as he was telling them uguti he will disappear from them and then his body will resurrect and be rebuilt within the third day and then he will go and ascend to heaven they couldn't understand what he was talking about and he made them to share the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. And he took wine. The Bible says he took wine. And that wine was symbolizing the blood of Jesus that was to be shed on the cross. And he took bread. And that bread symbolized his body that was beaten heavily. His body that was hanged on the cross. His body after the blood, all the blood that he had. And then he then said it is finished. And when he died, his body was hanging on the cross until a certain man came and requested to take him so that he can bury him with decency. And he buried him into a new tomb. The very same body that they put into the tomb resurrected. But when it resurrected that very same body, it was made to be new. It was sanctified. It was sanitized. It was sinless. It was blessed power. He will help us when you are a black person. He will help you as a black person. He will sanctify you. He will make sure that no sin that is upon you. When you are a white person, he will help you as a white person. He will sanctify you. He will make sure that there are no sins on yourself. And he will rejuvenate yourself and your body. And that's what happened. And the very same body resurrected because they never found his body anywhere else. He resurrected with that body, but that body was new. Yakumbula, abafundi bake, abafundi gumbamba. And he said, no, 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 don't touch me, don't touch me. Because the body that I'm at right now, it's not the same body that I was. This body that I'm at right now, it's a holy body. It's the body that will be my aeroplane. It will lift me up and ascend into my father's place. Hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Can we just read the first uh, book or first Corinthians chapter 11? We'll read from verse 23 until verse 26. Ifundega Ganji. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. 
that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said take this is my body which is broken for you and do this in remembrance of me verse 25 in the same manner he took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death till he comes amen let's just pray before we participate in the holy communion baba siyabonga nanamhlanje futhi ekuseni sibonga uNkulunkulu wethu kusikhumbuza amandla segazini elika Jesu siyabonga ngelizwi lakho elinamandla eliphila engeke liguquke alikhe linye igama alikhe linye lizwi esithembe kulona ngaphandle kwezwi lakho Baba Namhlanje we are proclaiming the blood of Jesus upon our lives as the scripture says we will do this in remembrance of what you have done for us on the cross so that our sins can be washed and we can be purified I pray for the God that you bless us as we are taking part on this holy communion you bless your children wherever they are seated as they will be taking part as well I ask you Lord that you be with them I ask you father that you bless them. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen. I want you to join me and in taking and partaking in the holy communion. But I just want to share what Paul was talking about here when he was talking to the church of the Corinthians. Paul he was remembering the time when Jesus was with his disciples disciples as I said earlier on. And he said he says here Jesus he took the bread and he broke it and he said you must do this in remembrance of me and he therefore took the cup and he said you must also drink this cup as the new covenant in his blood in my blood that was Jesus speaking this do as often as you drink and in remembrance of Christ Jesus and that's what we're going to do today This is not the blood of Jesus. This is an ordinary juice. This is not the body of Jesus. This is ordinary bread. But I want all of us as we are partaking in the holy communion that we need to do this in remembrance. In other words, we are not drinking blood of goats or anything. We don't drink any blood. We don't do that, but we are doing this in remembrance. It's like when you miss somebody when you are far away and you miss your wife or you miss your children and you are taking the picture of them that you carry in your wallet every time and when you look at them you are doing that in remembrance of them and you feel like you are seeing them noma bangekho nawe ngaleso sikhathi but when you look at their picture when you look at them on their faces you can see that these are my beloved and that's exactly what we are doing with this when we do this and partake here we are not necessarily drinking the blood of Jesus and eating the flesh but we are doing this in remembrance of what the blood has done for us in remembrance of the power that rest in the blood in other words we are performing this in the spiritual in other words we know that when we take holy communion because we are now not in the physical we are operating in a different level in the spiritual we understand what when we partake here we remember the new covenant that he has promised us when our bodies are not well by partaking in the holy communion we purify we sanctify we remove all things because of that eternal redemption we i want to tell you just 
by participating. If you are there in your house, wherever you are, and maybe you are not feeling well in your body, maybe you are not feeling well emotionally, maybe you are not feeling well in any aspect of your life, I want you to do this in remembrance of the covenant of the Lord that he has made with us, Singabantwanabako, as his church. And whatever that is troubling you, whatever that is stressing you, whatever that is making you sick, I want to say to you right now in the name of of Jesus it will disappear because of what we are going we are about to do right now amen so I want you to take the bread in remembrance of what he has done he said you must take this before we can eat the bread when you continue with the verse it says you need to examine yourself it says each and everyone before they participate in the Holy Communion they must examine themselves that there mustn't be anything. It says if you feel that you have, you have wronged your brother, stop taking it. Make a call. Call your brother or call anybody and say, hey, dude, I'm sorry I did this. I apologize. Uh, so that when you take the new covenant of the blood of Jesus, it must purify and redeem you from anything. And I want to give all of us that minute of coming unto the Lord. And asking God to purify us. And asking God to cleanse us. And asking God to be with us. And I want you to pray inside yourself. And ask for the purification. Examine yourself. Just bring them to Christ. You don't need to wash them yourself. The blood of Jesus will do that. You must just acknowledge and say, Father, I might not be clean because of ABC. Lord, I pray that you cleanse me. You purify me. You sanitize me. You sanctify me. You, Lord, help me. And that eternal redemption will make sure that you are redeemed from whatever a katazayo right now. Let's just have that word of asking God to forgive us. Lord, we come before your throne, my Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the blood. I present myself unto you as your servant. Father, I ask you at all times in my life that you wash me, that you purify me. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. Things that I may have, I may have uttered with my mouth, things that I may have watched with my eyes, things that I may have heard with my ears that I was not supposed to do, things that I may have touched that I was not supposed to. And I pray that, Lord, you cleanse me, you sanctify me, forgive me of all my iniquities at all times. Baba Kulega, as your prayer says, that ustetelele amaputete mishange misha, sishambululege baba sazoja, kulunkuluiti silo senkos. Amen. Let's take the bread and eat with gladness and understand what the Lord has done. Let's eat the bread, but turn again. Then the scripture says, in the same manner, he then took the cup and he said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And I want us to do this together and remember what the Christ has done and remember the blood of Jesus. Let's take the cup as we are remembering the blood of Jesus. Amen. Baba we to see a bong. Si bong e kazeli ka ches. E kazeli slanza yo. E kazeli skinsa yo. E kazeli stetela yo. Baba si a bong uti ngaso song ke skat e kazin lako na manja. E kazlako ali kuki ali katali salal sebenze injalo. E impilwenze tu singabantu Na se impilwenza abantu bakho bonke lisa sebenza lisazo sebenza. Baba sibongu zvuselela na namhlanje kuseni sibonge inkazi mulo yakho kulo lusuku nkulunkulu wethu zibonakalise ke impilwenzi yethu sonke mawuhlale njalo sikhumbula 
amandla segazini elika Jesu siyakhuleka ke baba ngegama lihle namandla lomfelo wethu Jesu Kristu amen siyabonga bathandekayo uNkulunkulani ubusise uNkulunkulu abenani uNkulunkulu asigcinelene nina we'll see you on Wednesday 7 o'clock as we bring our Wednesday services then on Thursday again Pastor N will be with you just to share the word of God with power and with greater depth of insights and we want to thank God for her and the messages that he is bringing to us to make sure that we are all well and all growing up Unkulunkulu anibusise ke bancwele siyambonga uNkulunkulu ukuthi uzozivikela uzosinakekela uzoba nathi nesikhulekise njalo nathi sizonkhulekela i know many of you we may not know you in person but I, sometimes when I pray, I just say, Father, bless your people wherever they are. Just bless your people, Lord. And then now, your people in Gyakfaga, Mangabe, and Gigwazi in person. But I ask that you pray for us and you ask Lord, the Lord to strengthen us at all times. So have a wonderful day on this lovely Sunday. And may the Lord be with you and may the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.